One of the top features in AutoCAD Civil 3D for transportation engineering is intersection design. Intersection modeling is automated and wizard driven, and the result is a full quarter model with dynamic offsets and profiles and dynamic curb returns and profiles. To demonstrate the power and ease in which intersection models and the resulting full roadway quarter can be generated, we'll look at a, a project that includes the reconstruction of a county road, which includes two intersections, one four-leg intersection and one three-leg intersection. To begin the process of intersection design, the alignment and finished ground profiles have already been stored. Let's start by looking at the four-lane or the four-leg intersection. To initiate the intersection command, we'll select it from the ribbon, and we're being prompted for the intersection point, which we'll also select. And then the next prompt is for the main road alignment. So we'll select it from the drawing here. With that, the intersection wizard is, is shown. And the first page of the wizard enables you to specify general inter information about the intersection. So things like the intersection name, we're going to call this one four legs so we can differentiate them. The intersection marker style, the intersection label style, and then the intersection corridor type. There's two options, one where the primary road crown, in, crown is maintained and the other where all crowns are maintained. So the crowns in both roadways will be maintained and the warping will occur around the radii. Otherwise, the primary road keeps it crown maintained and the side road elevations will be warped to fit into that. On page two is the geometry details page which enables us to create offset and curb return alignments that are dynamically linked to the parent alignments and the intersection models. The offset alignments are defined here. So we can either choose to use an existing alignment or one that's not, and if we don't use an existing alignment, we specify the offset value. You'll notice that inside this dialog box, I know which alignment is which by highlighting it in the dialog, and it's highlighted in my drawing as well. I also can specify curb return parameters. So these are things like the curb return type, Default is circular fillet, but you all can also do a three-centered arc or chamfer, and it gives you a little display of what that would look like. You also are given visual cues in the drawing so that you know exactly which quadrant you are entering the information for. Turn lanes can be added as well, though we're going to start with no turn lanes. Lastly, you can elect to generate dynamic profiles. So with this option specified, the elevation of the new profiles will automatically be locked to the to the parent roadway. So here you just need to specify things like um, the slopes of the lanes. So here's your cross fall from the center line, which would be minus 2%. You can also use existing profiles. And again, you can see that you're given visual cues in the drawing when the different alignments are highlighted. And the same thing for curb return profiles. So here you are specifying different parameters and how far you want to extend those profiles along the main roads offset profile. Now on page three is the corridor regions page, which enables you to create a corridor when the intersection object is created. So you can elect not to create one or you elect to create one. You're creating a new corridor or if one exists in your current drawing, you can add to that existing corridor. And you specify your target for surface daylighting also on this page. Now what you'll notice is there's assembly sets that can be automatically imported in. So if we browse to my assembly sets, I have some assembly sets set up for different types of intersections. So the one that we're going to be using has curb and gutter, but then there's also some set up um, for use with various types of shoulders and different types of intersections. So then it automatically loads those assemblies into the dialog box for the various regions. So it automatically splits up your intersection and your corridor into the appropriate regions. So at this point, all we have to do is press create intersection and the intersection and ensuing corridor is automatically generated. 
Once the intersection model is created, PVIs in the side road profile are locked, maintaining their relationship to the main road alignment. When you are down in the profile view for that side road, you should get a little tooltip that tells you where the geometry is coming from. So here it's telling me that it's dynamically locked to my alignment Highway 20 profile. If I make a change to the main road profile, so here I'm just going to pull it above the existing ground, what will automatically happen is the relationship is maintained at the intersection point so that the side road profile is also pulled above the existing ground. Now while Civil 3D does the basic design of the intersections, there are times that you're going to have to go in and make some changes to those initial designs. For example, the profile of the curb return. When it's initially created, it's a linear fit between the two endpoints of the curb return alignment. So it's just a linear fit between those two points. Now you may want to go in and add detail by adding PVIs that represent things like the low points to accommodate drainage in that quadrant. So to do that, we'll take a look. This is our southeast quadrant and we want to make some changes so that we can add an inlet and have our water drain to that location through our intersection. So we'll go in and add a new PVI to that profile and I'm going to make it obvious so that you can see the change in the model. So as quickly as that the profile is updated and the ensuing quarter model is automatically updated so that any reevaluation of that drainage can be performed. When building the model for a three-leg intersection the one difference that you'll see is that after you are prompted for the intersection point, you are not prompted for the main road alignment. This is because it's assumed that the through road is the main road. All other prompts are similar. If you want, you can add this corridor model to the existing corridor of the four-leg intersection, which we'll do here. The intersection and the ensuing corridor model all, are all dynamically um, connected to the geometry that defines each piece. So for example, if I decide I need to change the location of my main roadway or my main alignment, I can simply move it, grip editing, and immediately my intersection updated. And if I rebuild my corridor, those changes are seen instantly as well. Intersection design in Civil 3D is automated and provides a full model of the intersection which maintains a dynamic link with the associated element. For this reason, intersection design in Civil 3D is a top 10 feature for transportation engineering.